Okay, let's go discuss some random shit or something. So, uh, right after War of 1812, Cotton just comes in like a fucking freight train, starts grabbing a hold of the American economy by the balls, and says, I control you now. It became King Cotton. Like, it was, or Cotton, it was based on everything, it was based around Cotton. Like, we, and like, this was driven by like, you know, like mills being stolen from England because a guy named Lowell memorized all the blueprints for mills and took it over, and a guy named Eli Whitney making a cotton gin and like interchangeable parts and shit. It's fucking crazy. And then there's like coal powered steam engines and shit powering mills, and there's. And then the south just becomes there's this black belts of soil where. Where, where, uh, uh, the black belt of states where the soil was dark and it was really good to grow cotton there, and so, and so all sorts of, all sorts of new places were growing cotton, and then there was, and then in the north you have the, 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 the mills expanding out from Lowell, Massachusetts, and then, uh, and then slavery as a result is also like just growing exponentially, shit ton. And I mean, it's slavery, man. It's pretty fucking shit. And there's also a lot of slave, where uh, runaway slaves and the slave revolts and other crazy ass shit. And like, you know, it sucks. But you know, it all wasn't so good in the north either, because in the north, you've got people do being fucking miserable, working in factories, getting money. And they thought they could be free from the farms and then they just got put into factories and then they couldn't go back to farms because farming was now a southern thing and you know they got fucked over because at first the lower mills tried to be like all nice and cutesy for their workers and stuff and they went like yeah but you know if we treat you like shit we get mo more money faster so you're you're fucking shit lords now haha <laughs> sucks and also um New York City becomes like the major port city where stuff gets traded from and shit and things because you know it's it's a port and it has port stuff and it has port dock workers and crazy shit like that and there's also like these things called packet ships that would you know trade shit on a schedule now not just randomly trading shit no they go on a schedule from New York to Liverpool and back it's crazy man and also, like, banks were there. And a lot of banks and insurance companies and shit. It's pretty crazy, dude. Oh, yeah. And th at the very end, there's this panic of 1819 that everybody blamed on the Bank of the United States. And even even though it could... Even though it was really for, because of the fact that, you know, like, America's making a shit ton of cotton. And, like, yeah. There's kind of uh, an overabundance of it. Okay. Now then, technology and other transportation shit. So, this this guy named, uh, uh, you know, De DeWitt Clinton went like, I'm gonna build the air canal. And those people were like, how the fuck are you gonna do that? Nobody's ever done something like this before. And he's like, but fuck you, I'm gonna make it anyway. And so he hired a bunch of contractors. And he made sure that everybody had a part in the canal. And he made sure that everything was made right. And then, boom, there's a fucking air canal, motherfuckers. Never, never expect it. Never expected fresh seafood in your fucking rural towns now, did you, motherfucker? Fucking oysters, fucking beautiful ass oysters. Never expected that shit, did you? Now you got it. Cause fucking Erie Canal, man. Crazy. Shipping is so much cheaper now. Fucking insane. And also, like, steamboats became a thing now, so you could, like, go up fucking rivers, like, super fast and shit. And, like, roads were being built from the west to the north, but not to the south, because the south didn't like infrastructure, they didn't give a shit. And so, like, news was traveling around everywhere, and it was pretty fucking cool. And, you know, yeah, and yeah, because, like, travel time everywhere is slower, so, like, news gets around faster, and products get moved around faster, and more money more money's being made fucking live and also like corporations start popping up because you know you want to have mul a lot of investors in a thing so you can't you know you can't fail as easily and then you got banks financing those corporations with loans and shit you know 
instead of just everybody individually financing everything and like risking everything and probably going to lose everything it's a bunch of people investing money into a corporation where if like they lose it, it's not too much and so there's less there's is is a lot less risky or something like that. I don't know. I'm not an economics teacher. You, you ask. I don't know. I, I ask a ask a guy in AP Eco. I, I don't know. I, I don't give a shit. <sighs> and also, like, since we're all like doing factories and shit, we're working in mills and factories and shit, and we got like schedules and shit. So like, the world's different. Like, we're so much more busy, and we're we're like. And it's so much different than the previous, like, really fucking slow and boring world. Now we're in a fast world where everything's happening at a time, at a set place. And you gotta be fucking ready to go, man. Like, there's, like, there's that book called Rip Van Winkle. And then, like, he noted that, like, everything was changed. And then, you know, you're, you got political parties now. And it's, like, it's fucking crazy, dudes. Absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. And now we get to talk about those politics I was talking about earlier. So, the Supreme Court went like, We can declare laws unconstitutional! And the state legislature's like, Our laws too? And they're like, Bitch, fuck yeah, duh! And the state's like, So, like, if we try to nullify contracts, we can't. And the Supreme Court's like, Bitch, don't nullify contracts, don't make unconstitutional laws, don't try to do shit the federal government's supposed to do. Cause I'm fucking John Marshall of the Supreme Court, motherfucker. Does that happen? You know, shit by like McCulloch vs. Maryland saying the National Bank can exist, and Dartmouth College v. Woodward saying that states can't nullify contracts, and uh, Gibbons v. Ogden v. Ogden saying that states can't regulate interstate commerce because federal government's supposed to do that. Boost the federal government power. Boom. Oh yeah, and because like slavery is a thing, we can't exactly admit slave states into the union without another free state because we don't want to upset the balance of power in the Senate. And so like, whenever Missouri wanted to become a slave state, like, they, we were like, oh shit, we gotta do something. Oh, let's make a compromise. We'll get Maine in here too, and everything north of Missouri gets to become, or north of the 36 something line. The 3630 line, it's it's got to be a free state, unless it's Missouri. Hurry. And also in 1824, there was no political party but the Democratic Republicans. And so you got, like, these four dudes, Adams, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, uh, some guy named Crawford who's not going to be important, and some guy named Henry Clay that all try to, you know, run for the presidency. And so... What happens is that Jackson gets the most votes, but not a majority. Adams gets second most. Crawford gets third most. Clay gets fourth most. So, goes to the House of Representatives. Clay, knocked out because it's only the top three. Crawford suffers a stroke, so nobody cares about him. And then, um, people are like, oh no, Jackson kind of looks like a little Napoleon over here. He, he's like a military dude. I'm scared of him. And then Clay is just like, hmm, everybody, since I'm the Speaker of the House, I say we should vote for Adams. And so, this, and so the House of Representatives votes Adams to be president. And then Martin Van Buren and Andrew Jackson are like, that's a corrupt bargain. What the fuck are you doing? I should have won the presidency, you fools. <sighs> And then Henry, Cl and then Henry Clay becomes the Secretary of State. So everyone's like, "Oh shit, he made a fucking deal, man! What the fuck? It's fucking bullshit! It's fucking crazy!" And then uh, with Adams and Clay, they tried to do like a bunch of shit that, like, the North wanted, but like the South and West didn't care about. So like, you know, it sucks. But they also made this thing called an American system that like boosted our economy, and it was pretty fucking cool. But here, here's the thing. Politics, party, political parties coming back, man. And so now you got, like, the people who used to, you know, support Adams and Henry Clay, and they became the Whig Party. And then everybody who was supporting Jackson eventually became the Democratic Party. Oh, fucking boy. And then, and then finally, eventually, Andrew Jackson becomes the president of the united states and we're gonna fucking talk about him later Whoa. 
Alright, good night. I'm gonna go fast.